Hey everybody, welcome back to One Minute Walking Tours. I am your host, yes, host, Jonathan. Anyone from my hometown of West Hartford, Connecticut knows exactly where I am. Sorry for the car noise. We were on South Main Street in West Hartford, Connecticut. Now, at the time this house was built, this was part of Hartford, Connecticut. And this is, of course, if you know where I am, the, well, the uh, childhood home or farm of Noah Webster, uh, one of the most famous lexin lexiconographers uh, in history. He is, of course, synonymous with Webster's Dictionary. Uh, now, this would have been his family farm. Uh, he was born in 1758 uh, during what would have been the height of the Seven Years' War, or America, or as we say in America, the French and Indian War. And this would have been his family's property. Uh, and they had to sell some property in order to get him uh, to go to Yale, and where he graduated in 1778 during the height of the uh, War for uh, Independence here in the colonies. Now, unfortunately, you can go on and on and on about Noah Webster, which is, he is West Hartford, Connecticut's uh, certainly most famous son. Uh, and every year they hold a birthday here and they have colonial food, you can tour the house, they have music, and they have a spelling bee, uh, which seems appropriate. <laughs> and uh, Noah Webster went on to write some 200 tracks, books. He was anti-slavery, he was pro-federalist, he was friends with America's favorite, Alexander Hamilton. Uh, but the two things I'll highlight uh, in, in his long career as the father of American scholarship and education uh, is the first, he was as, uh, an essential figure in America's Copyright Act and making sure, obviously, what copyright protects is the right to earn money and have protection over the work you make as a writer, as an artist, and as a very large fire truck. <laughs> uh, and he was uh, fundamental in doing that. Now, there was a book, uh, I think about 10 years ago, that called him the last founding or the forgotten founding father. And the reason he gets that a title sort of after the fact, if you will, uh, is because he went on to write what's called the Blueback Speller. And he was a pioneer in public education. And he believed in public education with a capital P and a capital E for everyone, uh, for women, for enslaved peoples, for indigenous peoples, for everybody. And he wrote this blueback speller, which would go on to be the foundation for education systems all over the United States and out into the territories. And since many items can't really be carried too far over the Sierra Nevadas, over the Appalachian Mountains and so forth, this thin volume called the Blueback Speller would often go with pioneers who were in, in, interested in making sure that there would be education, uh, book learning, if you will, uh, and that would go out over the continent, over North America, and even into Canada as Americans would move across the border into Canada uh, before it became a country, which actually happened after the American Civil War. So this is where his humble beginnings were in this little farmhouse. Now, he did not write uh, his first draft of his American dictionary. There's certainly more than one dictionary of, of English, but uh, his dictionary would include words like skunk, which are, <laughs> of course, part of uh, American English. Now, Webster himself did not decide how words were supposed to be. People love history around here. Gets to me. Um, now he did not decide how words should be pronounced but he did decide which pronunciation would go into his dictionary. So I guess in a way you can say he decided either or, that kind of thing. He decided which one went into it, but he included native words that were native to New England and native to America that didn't exist, certainly in other English-speaking parts of the world. Great Britain! <laughs> so uh, he had an, obviously an enormous influence on the English language and the formation of what would become the United States. So thank you for joining us here. Uh, I'm gonna start calling, I guess, Out and About. One Minute Walking Tours, Out and About. Once I'm outside of New York City, I'm working on it. You know, it'll, it'll come to me. Anyway, this is one of the sites that inspired me when I was a child to become interested in history, you take tours, and I was like, oh, no, a Webster lived here. So, kinda wanted to do this. Anyway, again, thank you for joining. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you here soon on One Minute Walking Tour. Hit the off button.